All right, let's go ahead and talk about the new physical unit, Yim Yao, to where she can work for almost any free to play slash low spenders due to how strong she is. She primarily focuses as a main DPS, but she can also support, allowing her to fit with almost any physical or flame unit in the game. But do note that she was tested on the test server, so there's a chance that this could change. But this is what you need to know before you roll, starting with her main mechanic. So let's go ahead and talk about her normal attacks, which you're mainly not going to be doing, except for these two quick normal attacks, which you're mainly going to be using when you're main DPSing. But like most Domain 9 characters, you are able to fly with Yim Yao, and you don't need a certain ascension to get the full effect. So all you simply need to do is hold down the dodge attack and aim the camera to where you want to ascend to, and then you can hold down the normal attack and keep gliding as long as you have endurance. So let's go ahead and do a flight test. So here we have Rebellia to where you can see that in one dodge, she's able to get pretty far, but Yim Yao is able to get farther and get there much faster but she does drain endurance pretty fast, so be careful to land before you completely run out. So now let's talk about her dodge attacks. You have the backwards dodge attacks where you can quickly hit a normal attack and you can throw a couple daggers. You can also hit the dodge attack and hold down the normal attack and you throw a lot of daggers, ending with a jump to where you throw a lot of daggers. But sadly, these are pretty slow, so you're not gonna really ever do these. The main dodge attack that you're gonna be doing is a for a dodge attack due to how quick it is. But the most important thing in her kit is her skill, which has a long skill animation, but you need to make sure that this goes off. This is true for either a main DPS or support Yim Yao. What this skill does is giving Searing Blades, and each Searing Blade does a lot of damage due to all the effects that it does. They can only be activated by either a flame or physical attack, but once it's active, it applies armor dissolve, refreshes dodges, and it increases your final damage. So once her skill is active, this allows you to do her strongest rotation. Two normal attacks into a dodge attack, which you can keep doing because of all the dodge resets. This also makes her a great support, especially for main DPSs that rely on their dodges. So once she extends her hands and a yellow flash goes off, her skill has activated. You should also see a feather icon on the buff bar and feathers on top of her head. When it comes to her discharge, it's nothing special. Most of the time, you're going to be jump canceling this. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some of her special features. With the first one being that she is a dual element, meaning that she can work with both physical and flame. But do note that her attacks are physical similar to Zeke. Second, she has an SS Shatter, but if you remember the last unit with an SS Shatter, it was not that good. So let's go ahead and compare it to a previous unit with a strong Shatter. Here you can see that she actually is really good at shattering, just doing the basic combo, which now brings us to her trait, Armor Dissolve. This is very powerful to where it increases the flame and physical damage that the target takes. On top of that, if this is activated using physical attacks, it will stun the target, and if it's activated using flame attacks, it will reduce the target's speed. She also comes with a special elemental resonance, fusion of mass and flame, to where she benefits from flame and physical base attack, attack percentage, and damage boost allowing her to take the full effect of each piece of gear you have equipped either on your flame gear or your physical gear. Besides that, she has the physical and flame resonance as usual, and she has a special domain 9 ability, Flying Blades, which is mainly affected by physical attack, HP, resistances, and crit. This is counted as normal attack, and this damage can be multiplied by 1.3 times if you have a frost or volt weapon on the team. Which brings us to her trait, which makes her a very strong main DPS, because not only do you get an 18% final damage, but it increases your physical damage if the target's health is under 80% HP. On top of that, her normal attacks are greatly increased depending on how many physical weapons you have in the team. So now let's talk about her playstyle, which is pretty simple. If you're main DPSing, mainly you're just activating her skill and doing two normal attacks into a dodge attack, and you're continuing this until you have about 5-6 to six seconds left on her skill cooldown. If you're supporting, all you're really doing is activating her skill. Which brings us to her ascensions, to where all of them are actually pretty good. One star greatly increases your DPS by allowing you to get one more Searing Blade, and it allows him to be triggered more frequently, helping your rotations to be more smooth. This is one of her strongest ascensions. Three star allows you to shred the physical and flame resistance of the target, but do note that this does have a cap. Five star greatly increases your survivability by allowing you to gain a shield every time a Searing Blade is cast. And six star is another massive DPS increase by greatly increasing the damage of Searing Blade and further increasing your final damage. But even at zero star with her current stats, she still is very strong. So now let's go ahead and discuss the teams, but one thing I want to go ahead and mention is that physical does get the biggest boost from Yim Yao. The reason being is that she's able to utilize her trait and act as the main DPS for most of the teams. So her strongest fist team consists of herself, Zeke, and Nan Yin. For flame, it would be herself, Zeke, and Fives. And there's actually another fist team that's very strong as well, consisting of herself, Zeke and Fiona, with Nanyin inhabiting Yim Yao. There are other teams that aren't as strong but still pretty powerful. For example, for Fizz, you have Zeke, Jinono, and Yim Yao. 
This one is slightly weaker due to Armor Dissolve overriding Grievous. And for Flame, you have Leoa, Fies, and Yim Meow. With Leoa being the main DPS, so you can't really take advantage of Yim Meow's trait. And then we have a few honorable mentions. For Flame, we have Nan Ying, Yim Meow, and Fies. This is a very strong team, but the only problem is, is that you need to take advantage of Nan Ying's trait. Meaning when Nan Ying's detonations go off in her skill, you want to be on Nan Ying to fully take advantage of her trait, which can be a fairly complex rotation, especially in real combat. Other standouts would be Claudia, which works really well with Yim Meow due to her low skill cooldown, and she boosts Yim Meow's skill. Annabella also works pretty well with Yim Meow due to her skill, providing dodge refreshes, which is great for Annabella. But since Annabella has to be the main DPS, you're not fully taking advantage of what Yim Meow can offer. So now let's go ahead and talk about her matrices, where her two-piece massively increases the fizz and flame attack for the entire team. So basically Lyra matrices in the background, with her four-piece being just as powerful, greatly increasing the elemental damage as long as you have a physical weapon in the team, and is increased even more if Yim Meow herself is in the team. If you're able to meet all the requirements, this four-piece alone can rival Genono's two and four-piece effect combined. Zeke matrices are very powerful as well, and when combined with Yim Meow, makes a very powerful combination. And Nan Yin matrices, especially if you have Nan Yin in the team, these are some very powerful matrices to where I'd have to place these above even Zeke matrices. And Lyra matrices, which are really powerful matrices in and of themselves, especially for a main DPS, to where if you have Max Lyra, Zeke, and Nan Yin matrices, you might want to skip on Yim Meow's matrices unless you're able to max them. And Janono's matrices. These matrices are already beat out by Yim Meow's matrices alone. So unless you have these already maxed out, I don't really recommend using these. And for Flame, Fi's matrices are very powerful as well, but do know that Yim Meow matrices are stronger unless you don't have any room for a physical character in the team. And when it comes to Leowa matrices, you would be better off using Zeke matrices or a stronger limited matrices set. And lastly, when it comes to Ascensions, you might be wondering, is it better to go for a 3-star Yim Meow or get a 0-star matrices set? And I I would say that if you have no physical limited matrices, you might want to try to get a zero star set. If you do, then I would go for three star. And with that, that should be everything that you need to know before you roll. But look forward to my deep dive to where I discuss the various teams, rotations, and how they compare to each other. Well, let me know down in the comments. Are you guys rolling for Yim Meow or are you waiting for those future characters? But other than that, I'll talk with you guys later.